so far I've been showing bits and how they can represent numbers and how we can add them and count with them and that kind of thing and it works the same as in decimal but but instead we're doing with binary digits meaning we have a zero or a one we don't have ten um, let's just as a review let's let's say we have two binary digits so I'm just going to write them here there's one and here's two what are all the possible states I can have with two binary digits well let's just count up like we did in previous videos so zero 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 one one zero and one one and there's the max and if I add another one to this I'm going to roll around back to zero so here let's let's uh, write the decimal values out here to the right it's zero one two three Okay, so this is binary zero zero, but the value is zero in decimal. This is binary zero one, but the value in decimal is one. This is binary one zero, but the value of that in decimal is two. And binary one one makes a three. So that gives us one, two, three, four different states we can represent with two binary digits, and we've seen how to calculate that. And uh, I believe it was the previous video. Anyway, now I can interpret them as numbers, or I can interpret these as different. Um, bit states. So what do I mean by bit states? Well, you know what a bit is, but what does it mean by state? Well, this is one state that the bits can be in. This is another state that the bits can be in. This is another state that the bit can be in. And this is another state that the bits can be in. So these are all the permutations of possible states. And I can use these bits to... Oh boy, someone's banging a hammer in the background. But I'm just going to go on and hopefully you can't hear that too much. Um, these are all the different states I can represent with two bits. So, let's say this bit, in fact, I'm going to, well, let's just keep it for now. Let's say this bit represents, uh, if it's turned on, that means we're happy, all right? For some reason, we want to store the current state of our happiness in this bit, and we'll update it accordingly. And then in this bit, let's say that we're, uh, let me go, well, whatever. Let's, let's say we're sleepy, all right? Sleepy, like so. So if this bit here, this leftmost bit is turned on, that means we're sleepy. And if the rightmost bit is turned on, that means we're happy. So in this case right here, we're not sleepy, but we're not happy. Okay, we got plenty of sleep last night, but having a bad day for whatever reason. In this case, we're not sleepy, which is good. And we're also happy. So this is probably the best state to be in. We're not sleepy, but we're happy. This is looking like the worst state to be in. We're sleepy, and we're also not happy. So it looks like we probably need to go to sleep. And then uh, here, we're sleepy, but we're also happy. We're good. So you see here that, yeah, we can think of them as decimal numbers, which we generally do, but bits can represent whatever meaning we wish to give to them. In this case, I'm going to say this one's sleepy, and this one's happy. So let's say we have a chunk of the computer that can store two bits. Generally, computers store 32 or 64 bits at a time, but well, let's say we have a very primitive computer that can store two bits, and we're only worried about two bits, and whether it's two bits or 64 bits, it's roughly the same idea. And let's say they're both set to zero, zero. And again, this is the happy bit, and this is the sleepy bit. All right, I think we're done with this now. And right now, it doesn't look like we're sleepy, nor are we happy, but we wish to uh, change that up. And we want to do that using two operations I'm going to discuss during this video, OR and AND. Now, if you know your Boolean logic, this will be a piece of cake. If you don't, I'm going to talk about this as if you have never heard of Boolean logic before, ever. Ever, okay? So, no no prerequisites here. Let's just look at what we have here. I, uh, the current value we have um, is 0, 0. And I, I want to say, you know what? We're going to be happy. Now, there's a couple things I could do. I could just store a decimal one in this register, but that's kind of, I mean, it would work, but I, I want to do, do something a little different just to illustrate or and and. Instead, what I have to do is take this register, and I'm using the word register because that's what we store bits in on the CPU. Don't worry about the word register. This chunk of memory, I want to take this chunk of memory in the computer, and I want to set it to zero, one, so I'm not sleepy, nor am I happy. Well, the way we do that is by taking the existing value and either oring it or anding it with a new value. I gotta say, Jamie, what, what does it mean to or and and? Uh, okay, new, new concept. It's not, let, let's keep it pretty straightforward. If I have a bit and it's turned on, and I or it with a bit that is turned off, we're basically saying, hey, this or this. If one of them's turned on, then the result will be turned on. Or set is another better, is a better way of saying that. If this one's set, or this one's set, 
the result will be set. And I'm actually going to go the effort of writing or out here because it is a binary operation just like 5 plus 2. This is a binary operation and it takes two operands. Same case here we have 1 or 0 and I, I definitely could have written this out as 1 or 0 like so. But anyway I've just kind of written them horizontally here here because it's it's easy to work with groups of bits even though we only have one one digit in this case. Uh, it's easier to work with groups when we put them uh, top to bottom. So here we go. One or zero is one. All right. Now let's let's. What if I come in here and I put a one right here? Well, now I have one or one. Well, this is like mega mega set. This is this one or this one needs to be turned on. Well, they're both turned on, so the result is set or turned on. I'm sorry, I keep uh, swapping those two terms. Uh, what if I had? We we had a one up here and zero down here. What if we had a one down here and a zero up here? Hopefully that's Pretty straightforward case. Zero or one. Well, it's just one of them needs to be turned on, so that gives us a one. And then what if they're both uh, turned off? All right. So it's zero or zero. One of them has to be turned on for the result to be turned on or set. But neither one is, so the result is zero. All right. Uh, okay. Another operation we have. I'm gonna leave the. You know what? Actually, let's do a whole truth test here. Let's do all possible combinations. And this is why I said it's nice to write these things horizontally. Let's go 1, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 1, 1, 0, like so. So you can see I have vertically all combinations. I have 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, and 1, 0. And let's put the OR over here. And then bit by bit, let's just go through these. 1 or 0, well, one of them's turned on, so that's a 1. 0 or 1, one of them's turned on, so that's a 1. 1 or 1, both of them are turned on, but that doesn't matter. It just takes one of them to be turned on, so that's a 1. And in this case, neither one of them's turned on, so that results in a 0. Now, the other uh, operation we can do, bitwise uh, operation we can do, like, like or, is an AND. And I'll write it right here. And uh, let's let's just start with the basics. Basically, if I have two uh, bits, like I did with the or, one of both of them must be turned on. So this one and this one must be turned on. Both of them must be turned on. In this case, both of them are turned on. So the result is turned on. Uh, let's change this one to a zero. Well, now this one and this one is are not turned on. So both of them has to be turned on. So the result in that case will be a zero. Same as if I swap the inputs, 0 and a 1. Well, they're both this one and this one is not turned on, so that the result is 0. And then and then the extreme case, where we have both of them turned off, well, that's like a mega. Neither one of them is turned on, and we got an and, so the result's going to be a 0 there. Just like we did with the or over here to the left, let's uh, do all possible combinations. Like so. I'm just copying what I have over here and writing it over here. No particular order, but I do want to make sure I have all the possible combinations. Okay. 1 and 0. Well, both of them must be turned on with an and, so that's a 0. 0 and 1. Again, that's 0. 1 and 1. Yes, they're both set, so we'll have a set result. And then here, they're they're both mega turned off, so uh, as long as one of them is turned off, the result's going to be turned off with an and. Compare this with an or. The, the only case we get a turned off with an or is when they're both turned off. Okay, but with an and, the inverse is somewhat true. The only case we get uh, a one set, or we get a set, is when both of them are turned on. So we get 0, 0, 1, 0. Well, how can I use these rules to change my sleepy and happy state? Uh, you know what? This video is getting kind of long. We'll look at that uh, in the next video.